One morning, Claude got up very early to make the raggy dolls a surprise breakfast. He changed his beret for a chef's hat, put on an apron, and set off for the factory canteen. He was going to make a continental breakfast. Croissants and coffee, as we have it in France, he thought. He mixed the pastry and rolled and rolled and rolled it into a long strip. It was a complicated recipe. But at last, the croissants were safely in the oven. Then Claude poured some coffee beans into the grinder. Soon, the works canteen was filled with a delicious smell of baking and freshly ground coffee. Wake up! Wake up! shouted Claude. He banged a frying pan with a spoon to make it sound like a gong. Oh! What have is that? The factory's on for fire. Keep calm, everybody! Oh dear, I'm all of a tremble. Dotty was the first to peer over the top of the reject bin. It's only Claude, she said crossly. Really, Claude, you might have more consideration. <laughs> Can I smell baking? sniffed Sadsack. You most certainly can, said Claude. And can I smell coffee? But of course you can, said Claude again. Madame, Messieurs, breakfast is served. The raggy dolls made their way into the canteen. Claude had laid the table in the French way. There was a dish of butter balls and a bowl of black cherry jam and napkins. There was even a red check tablecloth. Voila, exactement as we have it in France, he explained. I have made a continental breakfast. Bon appetit. That means eat up, said Dotty. What a super surprise, Claude. Pity it isn't bacon and eggs and fried bread thought Sadzak. That's what I call breakfast. But by the time he'd eaten his sixth croissant and washed it down with a seventh cup of coffee, he decided French breakfasts were just as good as English ones. But he had to leave a pile of croissants for later because he was full to bursting. Just then, the factory hooter started up. People would be arriving for work any minute. Luckily, there wasn't much to clear away. But before they could leave the canteen, the raggy dolls heard voices. There was just time to hide before Mr. Grimes came in with Florrie Fosdyke, the canteen lady. Florrie was kind, but very forgetful. One morning, she buttered the teapot and poured milk on the toast. You must keep your wits about you today, Flo said Mr. Grimes. There's a competition for all the factories on the trading estate. Each canteen has to make a cake, and the best cake wins a prize. And I want Grimes's toy factory to win that first prize tomorrow, Flo. You won't be disappointed, sir, said Florrie Fosdyke. She flicked through the pages of her recipe book. There was a large picture of a sponge cake with layers of raspberry jam filling, topped with marshmallow and chocolate sauce. Mr. Grimes agreed that that was the kind of cake most likely to win. The raggy dolls watched as Florrie set out everything she needed on the table. A mixing bowl, scales to weigh things, and a spoon for stirring. 
the sponge cake recipe said one cup of flour, three quarters of a cup of sugar, half a packet of margarine, two large eggs and a little water. For the filling and topping, it said half a jar of raspberry jam, one bag of mixed marshmallows, pink and white, and a slab of melted cooking chocolate. Oh, groaned Sadsack. If only I hadn't eaten so much breakfast. Claude looked on with interest as Florrie set to work. Butter cake, butter cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Rick it and nick it and mark it with G. And there will be plenty for Grimesy and me. Florrie sang as she worked and forgot to look at the recipe book. She's putting the sh shells in with the eggs, crackled High Fry. That's never one cup of flour, whispered Lucy. More like a bucket full, agreed back to front. Now she's adding salt instead of sugar, Princess gasped. Sacre bleu! This is an outrage, spluttered Claude. Florrie poured the awful mixture into two sandwich tins and put them in the oven, which she turned up much too high. Then she set off with her trolley to see if anyone in the factory wanted a quick cup of tea. By the time she came back, the cake was beginning to burn. Funny, what's that smell? thought Florrie Fosdyke. She'd forgotten all about baking a cake for the factory competition. She looked at the oven. Smoke was curling out. Then she remembered. Oh, heck, yes. Well, uh, oh, never mind. I'll tell Mr Grimes it's a chocolate cake. He'll never know the difference. When the cake was cool, Florrie dolloped the raspberry jam between the layers and covered the top with melted chocolate and marshmallows. It didn't look anything like the picture in the recipe book. Hmm, not bad. It's quite eye-catching she thought. When Florrie had gone home, the Raggy Dolls went to see what the cake looked like. Perhaps it wasn't as bad as they thought, but it was. I don't think Grimes's toy factory has much chance of winning that competition tomorrow, do you? said Sad Sack. Yeah, about as much chance as an egg in a concrete mixer, <laughs> chuckled back to front. It's no laughing matter, said Dotty. The honour of the factory is at stake. Claude was disgusted. He sat with his head in his hands, muttering in French. Quel dommage. Juste ciel. Zut de l'or. Then suddenly he jumped up. I have it, he cried. I, Claude the chef, will bake another cake to replace that, how you say, thing. What a spiffing idea, said Dotty. Oh, yes, agreed Princess. Claude is ever such a good cook. Action stations, cried back to front. Raggy dolls to the rescue. There was plenty of flour, chocolate, sugar and marshmallows left in the larder, but no eggs or raspberry jam. We can use what's left of the cherry instead of raspberry jam, said Princess. It was absolutely delicious at breakfast. Good thinking, agreed Dotty. But what about the eggs? Lucy went to see if the hens had laid anything lately. This time, everything worked. There was even some chocolate sauce and marshmallows left over. It was a splendid cake. Super! Well done, chaps, said Dotty. Mr Grimes should be ever so pleased, said Lucy. And he certainly was, because next day, Claude's cake won first prize. <laughs> Florrie Fosdyke didn't know how it came to have black cherry jam in it instead of raspberry jam, but she put it down to forgetfulness. Sadzak hadn't forgotten the leftovers. Claude lent him his chef's cap and apron. And for breakfast next day, Sadsack invented a new recipe. 
leftover croissants with leftover marshmallows and chocolate sauce. It's called the Raggy Dolls Special, said Sadsack, licking the spoon. <laughs> Cause Raggy Doll, Raggy Doll, Raggy Doll, are happy just to be. Raggy Doll, Raggy Doll, dolls like you and me. One hot night in August, there was a great storm. Rain pounded on the roof of Mr. Grimes' toy factory. Lightning flashed, thunder rolled, and the Raggy Dolls thought they would never get to sleep. I'm stifling groaned Sad Sack. I'm frightened, whispered Lucy. I wish this thunder would stop. Thunder c can't hurt you. C -c Count between the c -c claps, said Hi-Fi. That tells you how many m miles away it is. One, two, three, began back to front. Four, five, six. It was like counting sheep. Very soon, all the raggy dolls were fast asleep. When they woke up next morning, the storm was over. The sky was bright blue and a beam of sunshine streamed straight into the reject bin. All the raggy dolls wanted to be out in the fresh air, even Sad Sack. I suppose a walk might be a good idea, he admitted. Let's go and see Pumpernickel said Lucy. It must have been scary being a scarecrow last night. You're telling me, agreed back to front. So, after breakfast, they all set off through the fields to visit Pumpernickel. The grass felt cool and pleasantly damp underfoot. Birds sang in the hedges, bees buzzed, and butterflies danced in the summer air. Isn't this fun? cried Lucy. No. Said Dotty. Listen. Oh dear, is it lions? Whispered Lucy. Don't be silly, said Dotty. Hi-Fi climbed onto back to front's shoulders and peered over the hedge. It's a herd of cows, he cried. They look quite fierce. Is it a law? exclaimed Claude. Lucy was all of a tremble again. No one's milked us this morning. It's most uncomfortable. Please get Farmer Brown. Uh, Righto, no problem, said back to front nervously. In the next field, the raggy dolls saw some pigs. They were also making a dreadful noise. Where's Farmer Brown? We want our breakfast. The trough's empty. We're starving, they grunted. Hmm, I know just how they feel, thought Sad Sack. <coughs> Soon the raggy dolls reached Pumpernickel's field. At first, they couldn't see him. But when they came closer, they found him lying flat on his face in the mud. Are you all right? Asked back to front anxiously. Help me up, cried Pumpernickel. Set me straight. Mais oui, immediatement, said Claude. But how? Get Farmer Brown. He'll know what to do. Wah! groaned Pumpernickel. Claude took off his scarf and laid it under the scarecrow's face so that his nose wouldn't stick into the mud anymore. Then the raggy dolls hurried to One Pin Farm where Farmer Brown lived. They peered through his windows. They banged on his front door and on his back door. But there was no one at home except Rufus, Farmer Brown's faithful old dog. He was locked indoors and started barking when he saw the Raggy Dolls. Roo! 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 Where's your master? called Dotty. There's been an accident, explained Princess. Pumpernickel's fallen down. 
the p -p pigs need for feeding, and the c cows need m m milking. No, but I need roughing out of this house, barked Rufus crossly. Where's his lordship? We thought you'd know that, said Dotty. Well, I don't, snapped Rufus. He didn't like being locked indoors. Back to front was looking in the barn. It was empty. No tractor. That's funny, he thought. Farmer Brown doesn't usually take his tractor out so early. Something's happened, said Dotty. I expect it was that storm last night. This calls for action, everybody. We must put our thinking caps on. Sadsack was crouching over some tracks in the mud. If you ask me, he said, those are tractor tracks. I bet we find the tr tr tractor at the end of them, said Hi-Fi. Et voila! And Farmer Brown, said Claude. The ragged dolls managed to open the back door and let Rufus out. In return, he let them ride on his back as he followed the tracks in the mud. Giddy up! Atta boy! Search, Rufus! Farmer Brown was in desperate trouble. Last night, he'd been driving home in his tractor when the storm broke. In no time at all, the lane had turned into a river of mud. It looked as if there was a landslide ahead. So he climbed down to investigate. And before he knew how it happened, he slipped down a steep bank and found himself at the bottom of an old mine shaft. Lucky to be alive. Help! called Farmer Brown. He'd been calling for help all night, but no one had heard him. Help! Help! Shh! Do you hear what I hear? Help! asked Dotty. Rufus ran to the edge of the shaft and began barking. Roof! 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 Farmer Brown was overjoyed. Rufus, you good dog! Fetch help! he called. Luckily, Back to Front had noticed a coil of rope tied to the tractor. The ragged dolls helped Rufus carry it to the edge of the shaft. Now lower it carefully, whispered Dotty. No problem, Back to Front whispered back. Oh no, there isn't enough rope to reach him, thought Sadzak. But there was, only just. Rufus barked and barked as Farmer Brown began pulling himself up the slippery bank. Let us hide, my friends, whispered Claude. We don't want him to see us, agreed Lucy. So the ragged dolls crept into the trailer and hid under some old sacks. Presently, they heard Farmer Brown saying, Clever old Rufus, fancy remembering that rope. You deserve a medal. And then the tractor engine started up and the trailer began jolting on its way. It's not fair, said Sadsack. Back to front found that rope. He should get the medal, not Rufus. I don't mind, said Back to front. Farmer Brown's safe and we're on our way home again. That's what matters. Well said, said Dotty. As soon as he'd had some breakfast, Farmer Brown was out in his fields again, milking the cows, feeding the pigs, and seeing to Pumpernickel. Oh dear, said Princess, I've just remembered something. Claude Scarf, cried Lucy. Oh, c'est la vie, said Claude. It is of no importance. In the factory, there's another whole box of them. For once, that scarecrow will look are you say, très élégant. Farmer Brown didn't know where Claude's scarf had come from. He stuck it in Pumpernickel's pocket, and for a scarecrow, Pumpernickel did look unusually smart. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like 
little raggy doll. Raggy doll. Raggy doll. Dolls like you and me. Raggy doll. Raggy doll. Raggy doll. Made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and jump. 